This episode of On the Limb with Nature's Voice Game Calls is brought to you by Top Down Construction, a local construction company located in Hurricane, West Virginia. A veteran-owned and operated construction company ready to tackle any project. With over 25 years of experience in the industry, they offer a wealth of knowledge from design to completion. Contact them today at 304-415-2203 and let them make your dream a reality. You can also check them out on their Facebook page or call them today at 304-415-2203. All right, guys, welcome to another episode of On the Limb with Nature's Voice Game Calls. We've got uh, Ryan Levet here tonight. I probably said his name wrong. <laughs> He's shaking his head. You knocked it wrong again. It's okay, though. Oh, dang. And then we also got uh, Leroy Jenkins here with us tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's got a new uh, – I guess he picked up a new stage name. So – He's out there in Illinois. You know how them That's guys right. out there are. So, Ryan, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. How about you guys? Uh, we're doing good. So, uh, Labette, I got it right that time. Nope. Still got it wrong. <laughs> nope. <laughs> it's uh, Lube. Lube. See, I only said it one time before we were the on the air there. There you go. Lube. Yeah, we were talking about that. So, that's a, that's a French name? French, Cajun. However you prefer. French. What he said, whatever. You know, they're one of the same. They're one of the same. <laughs> I hear you, buddy. So uh Ryan is the owner of Own the Outdoors, and uh he just want to have him on here tonight and talk a little bit about that and tell him tell us uh how things are going there down in Georgia. Hogansville, Georgia is where you guys are at, correct? That's a big town, yes, sir. That's it. Hogansville, Georgia. Yeah. <laughs> So what uh, what all does Own the Outdoors do? Well, you know, we started out, it was uh, me and a, a former friend of mine, we started out doing this uh, filming hunts just to, uh, you know, air on YouTube for other people to enjoy. Maybe try to, some things that we learned along the way, try to teach folks how to do it, you know, and uh, help them in being successful in killing, uh, you know, deer. What necessarily all about us killing deer. It's about helping other people get, you know, progressively better as well. Um, we're still learning just like everybody else. If you quit learning, you know, you're not, you know, in my opinion, you're not really being successful if you're not learning. Uh, but we, uh, me and him parted ways, uh, about two years ago and I've had to build it back up to what it is now with the help of the guys that are still in it. And, uh, but we basically, uh, we're still filming and, and, uh, recording hunts and, uh, showing, we show it all. We show where we mess up, where, uh, you know, trial and error, what we do to correct the problem and how to make it better. And, uh, we got a pretty good group of guys that really enjoy being outdoors and a lot of them have families and they, they love spending it with their kids as well. And they're in the wives. So, um, it's really just a family friendly, cut up country guy type atmosphere. And that's really what we're doing. You know, just trying to have fun and enjoy, enjoy doing it and maybe spread some knowledge with everybody that's in the outdoor industry with, you know, with us. Yeah, man, that's awesome. Um, I mean, uh, that's what uh nature's voice started on you know we started just on uh, a bunch of guys that uh loved to hunt and had a passion for the outdoors and my brother you know he'd built mouth calls we founded a business on mouth calls and he'd built mouth calls since he was 16 years old and you know we went to pocahontas county and here in west virginia and hunted about every year i started going when i was nine and he was going way before that we there was 16 years difference in between us and um uh, you know, t still to this day, uh, we have family members that go up there and hunt on, at the camp. And matter of fact, my uncle and them's up there right now. So they're archery hunting. So what uh, seasons do you all have in right now? You, I think you're all in rifle season. That's correct. We started uh, October 22nd, I believe, is when our season opened for rifle. Awesome. So how's uh, how did archery season go and how did that lead into rifle season? Well, I can't speak for the rest of the guys. I mean, they've all had... So far, it looks like most of them have a pretty good season. Um, mine started out about average, kind of slow. We worked into it. Uh, I missed a nice eight pointer with my bow. I shot a, I pulled a rookie mistake. Shot, uh, I shot the 50 yard pin at 40 yards, and it was a clean miss, went right over his back. Uh, and I uh, was kind of upset about that. And then uh, I came back and had a 10 pointer had been showing up on a regular on the power lines where I was hunting. And, uh, he came out right at dark, and I was able to stick one at him at 30, maybe 32 yards. Um, so we got some meat in the freezer and some eye candy to boot. But uh, the guys, most of the guys either killed one or 
working on they're either working on number two or they're done already. So our seasons for everybody's been pretty successful, I think. Go ahead, Dan. <laughs> oh, there he is. Um <laughs> you guys have a lot of public land down there you hunt or you hunt mostly on uh, private? We got some guys that really like to hunt private land, but uh most of us have private land, have our own leases and stuff. Um We've got 500 acres here in town. That's um, we've been hunting. I've been I've been hunting it for five years, and I've let a lot of good deer walk. But uh, last year and this year, we've been uh, less hesitant on you know what we're shooting, um, based because it's supposed to be scheduled for development. So um, you know, I've been taking people that haven't been as fortunate to kill big deer um, over and letting them hunt and get a chance at shooting something to get started with you know what i mean sure absolutely um, but right now we're at uh it's scheduled to be uh starting development I'm, i believe next year so that's that land's pretty much uh it's gone for uh for houses right yeah. so it it's inevitable i guess oh yeah there's but, you see it everywhere land gets ate up by these development companies be it housing commercial you know whatever it's and it's getting harder and harder to find it yeah and it's it's turned into a uh you know i ain't trying to get into too much here but it's turned into where it's uh we've been referring to it as a rich man's sport that's what hunting is going to um if you don't have a ton of money to invest in it you, you're not going to be able to hunt yeah yeah that's no lie i mean up here especially like up here in illinois where i'm at right now all kinds of land, huge plots of farmland. I know a couple of these guys I've been talking to that hunt, you know, most of them go in together with on a lease. Some of these guys, you know, I was talking to one guy, they got four guys on a 20 acre lease. They pay about a thousand dollars a month just for that lease. That's it's a little out, out, out of hand there. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's some of these guys there. I guess they're paying like $15,000 a month to hunt 400 acres. It's like, man, I can't afford that. That's crazy. No, it's not gotten that bad here, but it's 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 about twelve fourteen dollars an acre is what it costs per year to, to lease land around here. But it's constantly getting driven up with supply and demand. Sure. Do y'all have <laughs> um, do y'all have wildlife management areas there, or, or is and, and we do and about public land is is public land pretty scarce there, or is it? Uh, it it's not as abundant as it should be. Um, there's uh we have a wma that's not uh, west point wma is not too terribly far from here it's about 30 minute ride um but they have them throughout the state but it's not it's really not enough to account for you know people being they have quota hunt stuff like that so i mean they close it off some parts of the year they have core land that goes around the lake you can only hunt with a bow or a, a shotgun that type of thing but uh like i said it's just not enough it's it's really hard for to get new people into hunting with the way the leases are running and everything. Just just the whole scenario of it in general, it's just not great. Yeah, I seen. Uh, I was looking at your page there a little bit earlier, and one of your guys is it uh, Chris Morrell? He he bagged a nice Chris buck. A, yeah, he's a he's a friend of ours. He got him. A, was it an eight pointer? I believe. Yeah, it looks like a looks like a nice eight, maybe even a nine. He's got got some a couple different kickers on there, but that's a nice big body deer. Yeah, he's a he's a a friend of ours. He uh, he hunts in Hogan'sville as well on a different track of uh, land. It's a private lease that him and some of his friends have. Yeah, he was able to. I think it was last week he ended up catching up to that deer. Nice, yeah, nice. Yeah, I seen the I seen your pose that you had with that buck chasing that doe right there within the city. Do y'all do y'all hunt a lot in the city limits? Do y'all have to have permits for that or? How's that work? Well, it depends on the city. Uh, actually, like in Hogan'sville, uh, you don't have to have a permit or whatnot, but you you, you can only hunt with a bow. That's the archery only. Um, in Petrie City, I'm not too sure. I haven't inquired much about hunting there, but obviously I should since you see the uh, the deer running around the airport. Uh, they didn't have too too uh, too much concern about the planes uh, yeah. coming and going, people in and out. So might might be an option on the table soon. Yeah, I would say. Do you, do you guys have, like, we got some places up here, bow only counties. You guys have that down there? Um, basically, Metro metro Atlanta is all bow only, no firearms, but anything outside of that. <laughs> There's plenty of firearms know. there, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
<laughs> you can guarantee it. Yeah. So when's your when's your bow season come in? I know you said when your gun season comes in, how long it runs. That's that's amazing. I mean, I'd kind of enjoy that. We get two weeks. Well, so our bow season um, typically comes in either the first or second week of September. It'll run till maybe the – well, it's all throughout the season, obviously, but it, it'll run to um, like the second week of October. We'll have a week of uh, uh, muzzleloader, and then it goes directly to rifle, and then rifle rocks out all the way till January, like the second or third week of January. Wow, man, that's nuts. And, you know, our limits here, you know, you get uh, two bucks and ten does is what our limits are here. Good yeah. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, and people feel like because they're allowed to have Jeez. that limit, they definitely uh, they should definitely fill it, even sure. though they're not gonna, you know, eat 10, 10 or twelve deer, but they they still fill them tags. Right, man, that That's is crazy. crazy. I could probably eat ten or twelve deer in a year. We eat it every night, but I don't have a problem with that. I'm eating every night. You price beef lately? Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say. There's going to be more people down there eating deer this year because uh, the beef prices are outrageous. Yeah, agreed. Are they? I don't know. Mine's pretty cheap. <laughs> it's for you. He, he's a vegan. We ain't right to tell him he's a vegan. <laughs> yeah, I am. I eat the I eat the cow that ate the grass. <laughs> there you go. You're an indirect vegan. Yeah. There we go. I'm yeah. a secondhand vegan. How many cows you got now, Dan? I only got one left. I'm gonna get some more. He's got one cow on the hoof, and he has four in his freezer. <laughs> he's a hungry guy. Look, I mean, look, he's he's eating good. You know he is. That's yeah. right. I don't miss a meal. That's right. You shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. So what um, what kind of products you guys use on the team? Who who all you guys uh, sponsored by? Of course, I know you got some great calls there that you use. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know who makes them. Somebody out of, what is it, West Virginia? Maybe. Yeah, well, there's yeah, a, yeah, yeah, there's some good call companies up there in that state. Yeah, Nature's Voice Game Calls, I think's the name. I, <laughs> I don't know. It's been a while. I don't know. But no, those, those grunt tubes actually do kick ass. I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now, I love those grunt tubes. Everybody buys them. They love them. And the the, the detail y'all put into the grunt tubes and, and engraving, I haven't found anybody. Y'all should be needing some more of them soon, huh? <laughs> Well, I, I think I got three left from last year, and that's in, in, and that's by stroke of luck, I guess. I've been kind of holding on to them, you know? Yeah. Christmas is around the corner. Yeah, because you were going through them pretty quick last year. Yeah, you know, um, when I so when I swapped jobs and I got out of law enforcement and I started uh, working in Petrie City, I don't go, uh, you know, I'm not out in the public as much, so I don't see as many of the people as I used to when I was on force, so – um, that part of it did slow it down a little bit because they were like, Hey man, you got any of them grunt tubes? You just pull it right out the car. Here you go. Here's your one right here. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, it just slowed down for me on that aspect. But, uh, people still asking and inquiring about them a lot. And, um, I, like I said, there, I still got one in my, my bag. I use it every time I go, um, uh, just depending on what time of season it is. Yeah. Um, um, but uh, other than you guys, I think we use uh, we got Rich Tech Incorporated. We got we use their cameras, their trail cameras, their wireless cameras. They're they're really good. Um, a little bit more pricey than the reveal, but I haven't had customer service like where you can call the owner and say, "Hey, I'm having this issue with this uh, this camera. Hmm. What can we do about it?" Okay, well, and he'll walk you through everything. Take time out of his day to do it. Um, so I haven't oh, wow. worked with a company, you know, other than you guys, of course, uh, that will take the time out of the day to get get it straightened out yeah. um, without sending you to corporate or whatever else they got going on. Um, and then Craig, uh, Craig Boschel out of uh, Pennsylvania, we use his camera arms. It's Axis. Um, he's got, he's got really good camera arms that we like to use. Um, uh, but other than that, that's you guys, y'all are the cream of the crop, all three of y'all. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> well, we enjoy you. working with you guys though, you know, cross promoting and, uh, and the conversations that we have. Yeah, I think uh, I think we've been hooked up now for what about four or five years. Yeah, that's, yeah, I think we go about. I think we go back to what twenty eighteen. Yeah, probably 2017, 2018, somewhere in there. Yep. Yeah, we really appreciate you guys and the advertisement you all put out there for us. You know, word of mouth is everything, and you got to get the product in somebody's hands and get them to use it. And and uh, you know, we could do videos and post pictures all day long but when somebody gets their hands on it and they can hear it right then and there in real life they know that it's it's a good grunt call and 
we appreciate you guys there. Well, at the end of the day, you know, anybody can make a commercial and tell you how great their products work. But at the end of the day, doesn't everybody do that? Yeah. So in my opinion, like you said, putting it in someone's hands and letting them actually try it, that's going to sell more product than than to, to people that actually use it than other than somebody saying, hi, I'm so-and-so and I use this product. Yeah, definitely. Product that works. I don't give a crap what you use. If it doesn't work, I don't want it, you know? I mean, so the, I, I agree with what the, you're the, saying. I agree. The proof's in the pudding. Look behind you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not, there's not too many. I mean, I got the rest of them put up. I can't put them all in the living room. We get in trouble. Yeah, I hear you. But uh, I tell you what, um, we've been using your products since 2018. I killed. Uh, I was able to kill. Well, it was the second largest buck in Troop County with a bow uh, up until uh, last year, where T Bone uh, Travis Turner uh, managed to uh, beat me by an inch. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man. You know, uh, he's a good friend, and he's uh, he's a real good guy. And uh, he uh, he ended up getting me by an inch uh, in the county ranking, so it knocked me down to third. But that's all right; I'll give man. Him a so, yeah. Uh, but yeah, we were using your products back then when I was able to kill that deer um, with a nice. bow. So, I mean, I, I'm that's a that's a deer I'm proud of. Uh, first hunt by myself that year, uh, first weekend. I took some friends up from Florida, took them out hunting. And uh, this buck, I, I told him when they left, I said, I'm going to I'm gonna connect with that one when you leave. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> First night out on a Wednesday afternoon, 7 o'clock, he came in like on a string. And uh, and then uh, they couldn't believe it. But, yeah, he uh, uh, he green scored 160, and uh, uh, net was uh, 149 and, and some change. He was about right at 150. Nice. Uh, with deductions and, and whatnot. But still – your guys' products, you know, like I said, I back them because I know they work. Yeah, well, we appreciate it, man. Yeah, that's one of the things I wanted to bring up to you. I was listening to old T Bone last night. He was on uh, Alex DeBoard and them show down there in Georgia. Talk about it outdoors. I don't know if you've heard them and their podcast, but they're they're out of Ball Ground, Georgia, and uh, uh, West. Yeah, and uh, they, that's a real good group of guys there, and. They they had T Bone on for their second interview. Uh, they had him on a couple of years ago, maybe in last year. And they had him on this year, and that was just one of their recent episodes. And um, yeah, T Bone, he's he's a good guy. He is. You know, a lot of people don't get to know him on that level. And um, I was I was uh, when I was in law enforcement. I'm you know I'm, I was policing in the town he uh, lives in. So yeah, um, we met a couple times just casually, and then we ended up me him and. Uh, Brian, his land manager, ended up starting to have lunch every day, and uh, he really is a he's a genuine person, and uh, give you a shirt off his back if he can. Yeah, and uh, we think the world of him. So uh, you know, man, I tell you, name much, but he's a good person. One of the things that he mentioned in that podcast the other night was, you know, he's been going through some things, and he he's he told it on the show, and um, I won't I won't go into it, but. Um, he was talking about the things that he's been through and he said, man, he said, you know, being out there in the woods, he was like going through the things that I've went through. He was like every leaf that falls, every color of a tree that I see and just everything that God's created and just being thankful that you're there in, in God's country, you know, and being able to spend that time in the outdoors. Yeah. So, so Travis is a very, very humble person. He is, he, uh, He's very appreciative, and he knows, you know, he's very appreciative of the people that that uh, follow him and uh, supported Bone Collectors and him himself with T Bone Outdoors. He's he, he's a very uh, humble person, and like I said, he'll uh, he'll do anything he can do to help you, and he appreciates the little things. He really does. He's a good. He's a really good person. Yeah, and I'm sure before even those things happened, that he was one of the ones that appreciated the small things, but. For yeah. me, I can tell you it had to be the bigger things that I appreciated that happened. And it shouldn't have been that way, but I I kind of caught myself. I got COVID, and that was, you know, a couple years ago. Well, it was October of last year. And there was all kinds of stuff going around about it. And you don't – there a lot of people didn't know much about it, and I'm definitely not getting a vaccine for it because I've had the swine flu, and I've had all kinds of stuff. But <laughs> – um, 
you know, it is it is a virus that's out there killing a bunch of people, you know, and and it's kind of, you know, every if you listen to the news, which I don't listen to the news much anymore. But if you're watching the news, man, they're going to they're going to pump you full of stuff that that wants to put fear into you. That's and right. You're thinking, man, I got covid, you know, I could die from this. So when you're going through that period your 10 day quarantine or whatever. I spent most of it outdoors, just sitting out, you know, outside in the sun. Thank God it was nice weather. Didn't rain that whole week, that whole 10 days that I was quarantined, but I was outside. I was getting fresh air and I'm going to tell you what it will make you, when you go through something like that, I can only imagine people going through, you know, like different diseases like cancer and, you know, different things that happen to you in your life that affect you physically. I can only imagine how uh, sensitive your your surroundings are when it comes to stuff like that, because I'm telling you, that's one of the things. And I've mentioned it on previous podcasts before. I said, you know, when you get older, but I don't think it's much about getting older. I think it's the things that you go through in life to where you realize it's that sun that sets and it's that sun that rises is one of the things that you look forward to the most, you know? I agree. I do agree. Sure. You, uh, like I said, you learn to start appreciate more. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Now, do you, you guys get to do a lot of fishing down there or are you guys, are you mostly a hunter? I do a lot of fishing, but we don't, you know, West Point's been so, uh, fished out by all the tournaments and whatnot. It, you know, it's hard to go down there and, and catch, you know, a good many fish in one day. Uh, I sure. do a lot of the uh, farm. We do a lot of farm fishing. I do. Um, I got a buddy of mine that we go with. He uh, he was able to catch a 14-pounder a uh, year before last in one of these ponds. And uh, they're, they're, they're very well-managed lakes. So we uh, we like to go and hit them up a lot because, you know, it's nothing to catch 20, 30, you know, three, four, five pounders. Every time you go, it's right. Unless it's in the summer, dead summer, they're not gonna you're not gonna catch a lot of fish. But spring and fall, it, the bite's really good. So we focus on on little ponds like that. Nice. Yeah, you've had uh, you've had some nice bass come out of them ponds. I I didn't know that they were they were ponds that y'all fish. I thought it was local areas there, lakes or whatever. But I've seen some nice four and a half five pounders that you posted. Yeah, we've uh, we've caught a good many. Um, I haven't, I haven't had any mounted, I, you know, they do the replicas now. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it anymore, but, uh, I usually throw them back. Um, but I'm, I've been looking for my double, my double digits. I just hadn't caught one yet. We got close a couple of times and then break the line or get hung up on a, on a stump or something. Another story of my life, but yeah, <laughs> it, it's still good to experience and be out there and see them. You know, you got one, you just try harder. Yeah, I've I've hooked onto some good bass before, man, and they can get you tangled up fast. Oh yeah, oh yeah, quick liking in a hurry too. <laughs> yep, they sure can. So that uh, that picture that you posted there on uh, Facebook with uh, T Bone was that his buck that you all were getting ready to get scored, or was that yours? That was when you were still. No, that was actually the uh, that was the one that I killed in 2018, and uh, okay. that, I mean we were we were friends back then, and he uh, he seen me. Uh, I can't remember how he figured out that i even posted it or uh, how he knew about that deer i can't remember if i texted it to him or, or what, what how that went down but he was coming in town from a hunt trip and he's like hey i'm i'm coming through hogansville you think you can meet me let me look at that deer i said yeah i got it in the car so uh i went up to him and uh, i met him in front of the store and let him look at it he's like let me get a picture of this deer i said all right so we took a picture together and uh he uh that's the one like i said he, uh, he green scored 160 and then dry scored uh after his curing period or whatever it was 149 and change. Nice. He, uh, wow. yeah, he, uh, he took the time out of the day to find me on that one. So. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I enjoyed it. Yeah. He was mentioning, uh, his property and stuff that he has there. He has, I guess, two big tracks of land and he said he's basically going to be focusing on, you know, just local hunting local and things like that this year and until he can get back into the full game of things. Well, I know he, he, look, he feeds them and he spends money and he spends the time on it. Um, you know, he's, he's more into the outdoor industry than I, I'll tell you, he's more into the outdoor industry than people give him credit for. Uh, I admire the man, to be honest. He's, he's an idol. He definitely is. He, uh, he's, he came up, you know, 
the hard way getting into it, and he he made it happen. So yeah, uh, I idolize him. He's a, like I said, he's a great person in in and outside camera. He's exactly the same. He doesn't put on a front because he's in front of a camera. He doesn't go off screen and and bad mouth anybody. I've never heard that man say anything bad about anybody. Yeah. He's, he's, he's a not he's he's a fantastic person. And uh, like I said, he uh, he's got uh, he does have some big tracks of land around here that he owns, and he uh, he invests a lot of time and money in it. Him and uh, him and Brian, they uh, they spend a lot of time and getting it prepped. They 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 take care of their food plot very well and. Uh, they definitely manage the herd very well between the two of them. They take care of it. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I, I know he's he's probably put a lot back into his community there in Georgia, and you know for the for the uh, natural resources and outdoors there. He has, he has. I I, I know that for a fact. He, he does. He cares a lot about the outdoors, and uh, he wants to see. He's just like we are. He wants to see more youth get into it yeah. and new people try it out and get more in the outdoors and try to preserve some of what we have left. Definitely. Um, you know, before it's all gone. Well, uh, one of the things that we like to do on all of our podcasts is uh, we like to do a scripture of the day. And I'll go ahead and do the scripture of the day before Dan does uh, the salute to service. I was talking to you a little bit about that earlier, Ryan. We always do a salute to service to our military veterans, uh, you know, present and past. So we like to uh, do a memorial to those that have passed away, and we like to honor those that are still here with us. So uh, tonight, our scripture of the day is Job 12, 7 through 10. And this kind of goes into what we were speaking about a while ago. I mean, just just admiring God's creation while you're in the woods and I tell you, man, that's that's where I'm less stressed is when I'm in the woods or I'm on a stream. And um, seven, uh, Job twelve seven through ten says, "But ask the beast, and they will teach you; the birds of the heavens, and they will tell you; or the bushes of the earth, and they will teach you; and the fish of the sea will declare to you. Who among all these does not know?" that the hand of the Lord has done this in his hand is life of every living thing and the breath of all mankind. So I think that goes perfect with what we was just talking about earlier, man. I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, with T-Bone talking about that the other night on that podcast and, and I, I can relate to that, you know, I mean, I can relate to coming back to reality and knowing that everything you see is created by god himself you know the king of kings and lord of lords so uh ryan what else you got to talk about there brother what else you got going on for the season um you all are in rifle season right now you got any big target bucks that you've got on camera or what's what else you got going on so i'll go ahead and you know i'm not i'm not gonna be i'm not gonna boast about anything but i've got a few tracks of land that i hunt and uh so usually i try to get one out of the way and then the rest of the season, I, I, I got cameras out spread out over different tracks of land, and I search for, uh, you know, a mature buck, you know, either be a management buck, you know, one that's not as uh, as beautiful and luxurious as everybody wants, or, uh, you know, I'll find one that is nice, That uh, but I always look try to look for a mature buck for my second year, without a doubt. So I'm spread out over multiple tracks of land right now, um, but, you know, uh, at this moment, trying to figure out uh, what I want to get after. Um, you know, with only two tags, you can only yeah. take one out. And you know what I mean? You only get, you got to make sure the second one, right. that's what you want. You shoot him, you're done for bucks for the year. Uh, so right now we're, uh, I've got a couple different um, bucks. I've got one that I've been after for since 2019 his name's k we call him cage top of his rack actually it closes in at the top and his g2s are always forward on oh, his main really? beam. Nice. yeah he's he's very he's a very uh unique uh mainframe eight this year last year um i wasn't able to, to see him in, in person at all the year before i shot him i was able to shoot him uh he was at 53 yards i hit him with a bow hit the shoulder didn't penetrate um i still made a very diligent effort to locate the deer um was unable to and then uh continued to get pictures right. of him after that and uh saw him got got his sheds from that year got his sheds from last year um and uh 
had a couple of uh, have good pictures of him this year and getting more on a schedule, but I'm deeming he's about six and a half years old this year. Um, so and I've got three or four years with his sheds, either one side or the other. So he's uh, he's coming up in this one location that's in town, and if he continues to show up like he is, I'm going to try to stick him with a bow. Um, he's the most mature buck that I've got right now running around. Um, everything else is three and a half, four years old. You know, really like to see him make another two or three years of Babel. So that's where we're at with that right now. As nice. far as for me, now other guys, I got some guys in the group that are uh, one of mine. Uh, Ryan Hall sent me uh, some pictures yesterday, the day before. He's got a a beautiful nine pointer using them. I'm, I'm sure he's four and a half, five, but he's in the one forties. So, I mean, he's, he's a really decent deer for, especially around here. Uh, a lot of people are less selective on what they shoot in this area. So, right. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's, I know how that goes. You know, you, you want, you want to kill the big one, but when, do, when do you decide you have to settle? You know what I mean? So, so I know this is kind of in, in deep for you guys, but think of this for a second. Everybody sets out every year to kill the biggest, most beautiful buck in the woods, correct? Would you agree with that? Sure. They want the nicest rack buck in the woods. So you continuously take out the nicest bucks in the woods, take out all the continuously take out all the great genetics we got in the woods running around, breeding does. And what do you leave behind to breed the does? It's your stragglers, your management bucks, right? Yeah. So is yeah. that so? And I know it's kind of deep. It's a deep thought, deep thinking. But uh, what's that going to leave if we keep allowing the management bucks to breed your does instead of uh, you know instead of us taking out the management bucks instead of the trophy bucks? Yeah, I I totally agree. I mean that's that's part of deer management. I mean you have to you have to take out those uh, call bucks or whatever they call it every now and then, and and those management bucks like what you're talking about because you've got to have those genes to keep creating those you know, good, good bucks. Well, I mean, you know, over the years, you continuously weeding out the good genetics from breeding the does and allowing the the misfits or the, you know, the lesser bucks breed your does. You're constantly taking out, you're constantly hindering the great genetics from being spread. Um, You know, it's not a hundred percent going to happen, of course, unless you got a fenced in area, but, um, but it is, it's not helping at all. And, you know, Around here, people with small leases, that's just a, a thing you got to deal with. And uh, yep. I don't know how you would combat that to make it to where it's not like that. But I guess until the state steps in and says, hey, you're not going to be able to kill that really nice 130-inch, three-and-a-half-year-old 10-pointer over there, you're going to let it walk and kill that spike with the four on the other side that's four-and-a-half years old or five years old. You need to kill that joker because he don't need to be yep. you know, messing around <laughs> with the ladies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yep. I don't know, but that's a problem we're having around here, and uh, I, I've been trying to come up with a solution for that, but I don't think there is one, to be honest. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there is either. But mm-hmm. so, uh, like, like Michael said, another thing we like to do is the salute to service. So tonight, our salute to service, we're gonna give a shout out to Randy Ross of Charleston, West Virginia. He was he served in the Army for twenty seven years with the final rank of lieutenant colonel. He did. Uh, he did a lot of his service in the U.S. He he was over in Europe and Asia. He had two tours to Korea, Bosnia, and Iraq, where he was awarded a Bronze Star, Defense Emeritus Service Medal, Army Emeritus Service Medal, Iraq Campaign Medal, a Korean Service Medal, and a NATO Medal. <clears throat> he uh, he retired in July of 2014. You know that's that's a pretty illustrious career right there in the military. So we want to we just want to give a huge shout out and we appreciate your service, Randy, and uh, thank you for everything you you did for our country. Yeah, thanks, Randy. Man, I know Randy personally, and he's a great guy. Um, his his military experience and you know his integrity and honor it it definitely speaks volumes for the person that he is and. And the things that he's done, I mean, he's had a great success there in the military. Um, he was my chief for about two and a half years. So uh, we had a great time together. And, uh, you know, he's I, I just love 
hearing the stories, you know, from from people that's been in the military. I had a lot of family that's been in the military, but he spent a lot of time in Seoul, South Korea, and uh, he lived in Hawaii for a long time. So, I mean, he's got to he's got to experience the world in different aspects, good and bad. So we appreciate what you've done for us, Randy, and God bless you, sir. Well, Ryan, we appreciate you coming on this evening, bud. Yes, sir. I appreciate the uh, the opportunity to come on and talk to you guys. I appreciate it a lot. Hope that you get to bag one of your bucks there that's on your target list, on your couple of partials there. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. And if not, hey, it's always good just to – it's just good to get out there and be in the woods. You know, that's what I that's what I raised my son and told him. He's been hunting with me since he was four years old. And I said, son, it's not always about the kill. It's just about being out here and and experiencing, you know, the outdoors and just being in being in God's country. You know, I've I've always loved it, been raised in it, and it's what I love to do. I mean, that, like I said, that's where that's what my wife was telling me the other day. She was like, You seem a little stressed and I'm like yeah, you know, I haven't I haven't been hunting this year. <laughs> I haven't been able to get in the woods yet. I haven't had any trout fishing yet, so I need I need some stream and woods time for sure. So, how, Michael, how did you get involved in in uh, hunting anyway? Well, my brother's the one that got me involved in hunting. Um, like I've said on a couple of episodes before, my dad has he hunted as well, but he was more of the business guy. You know, he was the the breadwinner for the family back in those days it was just dad that worked mom and dad didn't have or you know both of them didn't have to work in today's time you know the the mother and the father have to work and it's it's still tough but uh during uh back when i was a kid you know i would hunt and i would go and scout with my brother and we would turkey hunt and you know uh any time that he was hunting i was there with him and uh we were, uh, like I said, we, we'd go and hunt in Pocahontas County, West Virginia. And that was where I have some of the best memories of my childhood is at deer camp. You know, I mean, I was just talking to a guy at work about it the other day. We used to ride Honda nineties into where our tree stands was and, and, uh, and park them. Cause back then those things were really quiet and, uh, we didn't have the quiet cats like you have today and the, the electric bikes and stuff like that. So we were trying every means that we could to get into these deep places in the woods, you know, six, seven miles back in without having to walk it. <laughs> and, you know, we rode these Honda nineties in and I was telling them that how I'd wrecked one up there. They were all sitting at deer camp and here I was coming down the gravel road. Meh, meh. That's all you heard. <laughs> <laughs> and i just i crashed that thing right in the middle of the road buddy it was crazy but yeah that's uh my brother you know he's the one that got me into hunting and uh i i'm thankful that that i was introduced to that you know and i hope that my son one day can can look back on and say man i i really i really am thankful that dad and introduced me to the outdoors you know yeah, I, so, you know, I notice, like, a lot of people, that's usually their dad gets them in. Um, so, uh, mine wasn't voluntary with my dad. Me and my dad really didn't see eye to eye a lot growing up. I was always the uh, one getting in trouble. And, uh, Dad's busy being dad, not my friend. Yeah. We all, I'm pretty sure you guys can relate. So, Oh, uh, yeah. No, I can uh, relate on some, some issues, definitely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> definitely being young, dumb, and, and doing dumb stuff, you know, it takes its toll. Well, anyways, the only time me and my dad never argued was when we were hunting together. We always got along. Yeah. So naturally, as you know, as I got older, 12, 13, 14 years old, coming into my own, I started taking up hunting with my dad because that's the only time I could be with my dad without being, you know, feeling like, you know, I've done did something stupid. Being, you know, you don't want to feel like you want to try to make your dad proud. And that's one thing I would do is I'd go hunting and I, if I killed a good deer. My dad would, you know, high fives, excited. He's pumped up. You know, that's that was the that was to me that was get my dad's approval. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yep. As a child growing up, that's how I got my dad's approval. Something. Well, then, you know, me and him continue. I moved out. I continued hunting with him, and then, you know, me and him just got along good when we hunt together. So uh, we just kept doing that. And uh, that, and then you know, gradually he started. You know, he's getting older. He don't hunt as much as he used to, and. Uh, 
So now when I go hunt, we get back to the, uh, you know, being appreciative and God and whatnot. Most people go to church. I don't go to church. I go sit in the woods. And when I'm sitting in the woods, you want to talk about feeling close to God. If you want to feel close to God, that is the place to feel close to God. Because like you said, everything absolutely around you, everything around you, man, it's all his. He, he did all of it. He created all that. Men didn't do it. God did. So you sit there, and that's where you feel. That's where I feel closest to God is when I'm hunting. Yeah. That's when it's quiet. There's no noise. Just the birds and, and whatever else. That's it, yeah. man. So basically, that's how I got to where we get back to, you know, talking about God and being in the woods. That's how I got to where I feel that way. Um, but being you know, going through that with my dad as a child and me and him getting along and, and hunting together and then it progressed into hunting and then I just go by myself now and I'm perfectly okay with it and enjoy it. Get you away yeah. from all your problems and all your headaches and, you know, just that's where I'm at peace. Yeah. So definitely Absolutely. something to appreciate. Yes, it sure is. Well, like I said before, man, we appreciate you coming on and we'll let you go for this evening. We've, uh, We've got about an hour in, so we really appreciate your time and uh Yep. Good talking with you. Yes, sir. It was good meeting you, Leroy Jenkins. Yeah, oh Leroy <laughs> Jenkins. That's right. Leroy. <laughs> but yeah, no, I appreciate it, Michael. I do. Uh um and I look forward to hopefully talking to you some more throughout the season and get some more calls over here soon. Yeah, yeah. Just let us know when we can help you out, brother, and we will. We will do it. You know we will. Yes, sir. You all keep up the good work down there in Georgia. And uh, everybody, uh, when you get a chance, check us out on our Facebook page at On the Limb with Nature's Voice Game Calls. And we also post on uh, our Nature's Voice Game Calls page. We do different posts on there, different episodes and things coming up. So we are on uh, Apple Podcasts, uh, Amazon Music, Google Podcast, uh, Spotify, and wherever you get your podcast, you will find us there. So we appreciate you, Ryan, and Own the Outdoors. So you all have a great evening, and thank you, sir. You're welcome. Anytime. Thanks for listening, everybody. This episode of On the Limb with Nature's Voice Game Calls is brought to you by Apparition Sense, an outdoor and sporting goods company based in Dillinger, Pennsylvania. All of their scents developed and hand bottled with strict attention being paid to every detail. Contact them today at 724-998-7646 or check them out at apparitionsense.com. 100% lethal or your money back guaranteed. Get a hold of them today at 724-998-7646. 7646 or check them out at apparitionsense.com